You know, mentioned it at the start, this is a bit of an eclectic mix. I feel that uh, I should put a preface my uh, sort of talk with, a, with, with a, a, a comment that I'm really here to make a plug uh, for partnerships for Creative England, um, which we think can be of benefit to large companies, large organisations, small companies across England as a whole. We're not here to um, kind of share insights in terms of industry, in terms of markets. We've heard loads of those from different areas this morning, and I'm sure we will later on in some of the workshop sessions. Our role <clears throat> as a creative industries agency for the whole of England is actually to help catalyse some of those programmes and bring SMEs and put, plug government funding into some of those gaps. Um, we are almost like the legacy, really, of the screen agency programme. So certain numbers of the audience might know certain uh, the network of screen agencies <coughs> across England as a whole, funded through the regional development agencies, the change of government in 2010, the demise of the regional development agencies as a knock-on, the screen agencies went as well almost by default. Um, in some areas they've managed to survive, and and the, but in very, very similar, much diminished form. And actually four screen agencies got together and said, we think there's still a massive opportunity here and actually a huge need as well in terms of the government trying to drive forward support for the creative sector in particular. So through last year there was a huge amount of sort of toing and froing as you can imagine and then at the end of the year there was a national agency established with, with um, support from government although no funding. So the kind of regime has changed in terms of core funding and so on but implicit support from government that this would be a good thing to do. There is a gap in the market and actually government wants to see through DCMS and Biz wants to see an agency look to support creative industries wherever it can. We don't make any profits. Um, we have uh, a legacy of investments from the Screen Agency Programme, and we also have government funding in terms of regional growth funding. So we landed some regional growth funding at the back end of last year. We're seeking to deliver through this year in the next three years. And we're also bidding in the round is next week actually for future regional growth funding, uh, along with everybody else from you know Vauxhall and Ellesmere Port to. Uncle, um, Uncle Tom Cobbley and all. Um, we're nationally based. The major centres are in Bristol, Birmingham and Salford. Salford linked to the me media city development of the Beeb. Um, but we also have people out in Elstree and, and Nottingham and Leeds and various other sort of centres. We're about 40 strong. Um, and as I said, predominantly based around the legacy of the screen agencies. But we're actually seeking to do a little bit more than that. Um, so what the screen agencies did around talent, around location, so if you want to make something, you want to support in terms of shutting roads, sort of getting the right crew in place, looking to film things like um, film festivals, you know, Sheffield Documentary Festivals next week, the large film festivals across England, we get involved with all that stuff. But as well, and probably the, the latest sort of addition to that is around business investment. We don't do grants, the days of grants, certainly in the UK, have gone. Um, everything, every penny we spend in terms of our support for business will have to be under some kind of investment umbrella. Um, we look at, we're, we're very open to different approaches. We're looking at revenue share, IP deals, whatever. Um, but we, you know, the, the days of grant funding are gone. You know, uh, as I said, in terms of sectoral support, the, the, you know, we're pretty much it. There are no, there's no other national agency around for the creative industries in England at the moment. Um, so in terms of the key markets, and it's really interesting, as I said, sitting here in the audience listening to a lot of these, because, um, again, like the last speaker, we're really looking for sort of opportunistic opportunities in major, large markets around cr cross-platform content. Um, we're very interested in things like gaming and, and uh, the broad sort of spectrum across the console, mobile, TV. Broadcast is a major focus for us, but we want to kind of recognise that broadcast in, its, in itself is just one market, and some of the companies that we want to work with actually have loads of op different opportunities across business to business, healthcare, and the, uh, the presentation from Tunstall was really interesting to us as well. And the public sector, in linking to the speaker we've just had around things like smart cities, um, that's a massive opportunity to us as well. We work on the basis, and I guess we sell to those large organisations the concept of this op open innovation model. So we're not just talking to the large organisations like the BBC and Channel 4 and lots and lots of other people and large public sector bodies as well, out of some kind of corporate social responsibility, we're actually talking to them with an angle around you're going to get better products and services if you develop with an SME community in mind rather than if you develop these things in-house. And that's following on from people like the TSB have sort of pioneered sort of open, open innovation approach and it's absolutely the model we want to say. And as I said, I'll probably stress this on every slide, it's an investment basis, we don't do grants, so it's not free cash. But we look to co-invest 
and we're working with sort of major organisations as well to kind of almost um, safeguard our investment, I suppose. So the Times of Program, the typical program we're looking at, is something where you've got maybe an 18 to 24 month gap in terms of real market development. So we're looking at BBC is a good example, and I'll use. They're looking at various children's developments out of Salford now, so Blue Peter and Garden and everything else is up in Salford now, right outside the tram stop. But they're looking at, okay, what are, what are our children's propositions going to bring us in 18 to 24 months? What is it we, we, what, where do we think they'll be? And actually more interesting for us from a commissioning perspective from the Beeb is they really don't know where they want it to be, but they, don't, they know it won't be like it is today. And actually part of the engagement with the smaller companies that they're looking to get is the shape of what those things could be. Because purposefully these briefs are left very open. So the brief to the audience of SMEs is, it's like this today, we think it's going to go in this direction, and it's the kind of belly vision, you know, the whole principle of, of how kids consume TV, particularly from the children's perspective and BBC, but that's only one of, the, uh, one of the channels we're working with. It's cross-platform, so it's a kind of ubiquitous approach, but it's very much complementary content. There's a good example, and actually we're partnering with a company called Conquer in the northwest from Liverpool, came out of... Um, Mersey TV, Lime Pictures, so, you know, Hollyoaks, Brookside, all that sort of stuff. They've done a lot around Hollyoaks. I don't know how many Hollyoaks viewers we've got in the room, but Hollyoaks have, have really developed a fantastic range of cross-platform, sympathetic content, so you, you, know, you use a smartphone, and it's not an iPlayer type, just replicated platform. It's complementary stuff, it's backstory, it's texting. It's a lot more, you know, it's a more sort of holistic offer. So when you go back to the TV program, actually you've learned a huge amount more about those characters and it drives traffic back to the TV show, the core offering as well. Um, we're also looking in a government space around things like service delivery. And, and I guess in the UK, uh, the, the problem we've got, and it's rather like the healthcare issues uh, a colleague from Tunstall was talking about this morning, we've got this legacy of face-to-face -face telephone based services. It's not like some of the countries that we see exploding in terms of digital delivery where they're kind of doing this for, for fresh. They haven't, they haven't got to base themselves on these legacy models and trying to move from it. But again, we're looking at prototype and development funding that link to things like the NHS, talking to a number of different charities as well, and public sector organisations like local authorities around how do they deliver future services for their population. So I'm very interested in the kind of, you know, the, 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 the white space applications, that mobile metering kind of thing. Um, and, we, and we will put prototype funding into those kind of things. And we're working with Bristol, Leeds, Sheffield and Birmingham around that, that kind of development. The, the model, and again, this is just an atypical sort of model, is where we co-fund in terms of investment. We look to a coordinator body. We run through competitive processes, very much like, like technology strategy board kind of thing, and where we emerge with a number of either proof of concept or prototype stages. So SME ideas brought forward, and then we fund in terms of development. Um, we then look at an option for those, the people who have instigated the idea, whether that's a commissioner, major city council as a customer, to then take that up commercially. But actually the IP share, the bulk of the IP stays with the SME. So we're not looking at commercial model like the BBC where traditionally they would have taken the vast majority, if not all, of the IP linked to companies in their supply chains. And we take a stake as well, or we look at revenue share deals as, as, a, as applicable. Um, I suppose what I came here today with was a bit of a wish list, really. Um, we've done some low-hanging fruit selection, so we've got a number of different organisations already in place. We've got a three-year delivery programme, um, so we're always looking for new opportunities, and, and, and indeed today I've made two or three more that I think would be interesting to take us forward. We're also looking at small companies who are willing to put some resource themselves into these, but to share the development costs linked to some of these major large market opportunities as well. So we recognise that you know, not all small companies have got either the resource, the finances, the people to be able to invest in this sort of new product development either. And I suppose broadly we're looking at co-investment models as well. So I'm very interested in talking to other organisations, whether they're public or private, about co-investment routes to achieve this broader end in mind. Um, we, talk, we, we sort of deliver through a number of different channels, if you like, routes to market. And again, we're always looking to broaden those and, and look to extend the reach as much as we can. And last but not least, we're involved in a number of international consortia. So we're part of something called the European uh, Creative Industries Alliance. We're involved in two or three different um, framework programs across Europe as well to looking at sharing these sort of models and look at how we can catalyse. I think the biggest thing for me is trying to leverage that public sector investment 
in things like government services, citizen-based services, and that whole government ecosystem that has to be funded all the time to serve us, to serve our children, to serve the elderly population, and try and leverage some of that investment into the creative industries. I think that offers the biggest opportunity. So we're not going with a sort of begging bowl to government in terms of the creative industries is, a, is an industry that needs to be supported and should be supported. But it's actually a way of developing much, much more sophisticated, much better government services. But on the back of that, supporting the creative sector in the UK as well as a whole. Um, so that's me done. I'm receiving emails as we speak, I'm sure. Um, but I'm very willing to talk to anybody. Right. Any, any quick questions? Uh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Can you just clarify, what's the relationship between the work you're doing with Conquer and Digital Fiction Factory, Fiction Factory, the they're, they're running? Well, they're, they're a sort of intermediary. They're the, an intermediary broker in Fiction Factory, so that, that's the work I'm talking about. So. Right. Right. I think what I heard, subtext, is you have got some investment types. Yes, we have. And yes. so open for business, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons for having Yeah, here. so as I said. Sorry, well, I'm curious about the relationship between content funding and... infrastructure uh, funding. I mean, and the relationship between the BFI funding film production in the UK going mm. forward, as far as I understand it, and Creative England, whether Creative England is, is just interested in facilitating um, new ways of disseminating content and not interested in funding film content, or whether you are getting involved in that. We are. I mean, in terms of the, my brief, it, it's looking at more the cross-platform world, so it's looking at the complementary development alongside film as well. So it's not pure film, it's not short film, it's not that kind of thing. But we do have a team within Creative England who carry that work on on behalf of the BFI at the moment as well. But in my, in, in my brief is really to, purely to look at cross-platform. So I'm looking at different market opportunities, which film is one, but equally, you know, government services, healthcare it is another as well. So that's How will you measure success, can I ask? Well, the government funding we've got, we were lucky enough to receive last year, comes with you know, output targets, if you like, as you imagine government funding would. But the basic model is going to be our return, because we're investing you know, for a whole raft of different models in all of these different ventures. So we'll be generating a return, a financial return to us, which will allow us to reinvest in future years as well. So we'll, we will live or die by the strength of those investments, decisions that are made. So we're going to probably end up with an investment portfolio in, in, in some shape or form, probably about two or three hundred companies, small businesses across England as a whole. And we'll, we'll live or die on those. We're not, we're not expecting to go cap in hand to government every year or so for, for grant funding. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Pleasure.